right, the website's gone down again, so I'm going to have to stick with the offline version. So, which is a bit unfortunate because all the links have gone now, all the uh, highlighted links, which can help. Um, so, e login D is what I want. So we must have installed eLogin D after DBus because it's a requirement. And then we've just installed DBus after eLogin D. So I don't think I do need to reinstall that. I've probably forgotten to mark it off. So that's okay. Let's get rid of that. Come back here and tidy up. Oh yes, I've got, I can see in my list, rebuild e-login D after polk it, so I've just forgotten to cross it off, that's all that is. So that's, that's good, that all tallies up. Uh, so let's highlight that. And I was cleaning up here, wasn't I? Right, yeah, we've got this pause now. This is this debus thing I had before, so I think I'm going to reboot the machine. It's taking too long. I'm just going to quit this and reboot. There may be some other library that hasn't been ejected from memory that's still in use for an older version or something. <coughs> so when we reboot and I've just checked that Dbus is tidied up, it should be okay. Um, I've got a rebuild to rebuild glib next. So I'm going to do that next of all. So let's get back to the sources, BLFS, and let's just check that that directory removed it did. I'm just going to check if I've forgotten to remove any other directories. Just keep things nice and tidy. AA loop. Oh, that's why it hasn't gone. 
that's it. Okay. So next I'm going to do glib. So I'm not sure if this is even going to work. I'll try it because like I say it's got all the links highlighted that I've visited which helps a little bit determining what I've installed. This case seems to be it, I don't think it was. Right, okay, this is not jumping around for some reason. Cheated, there it is. No, it looks like the website's still having problems. for this optional one so I'm going to extract glib Desired. Oh yes, there's this patch for the logging level, so we'll put this patch in. Let's get rid of these highlights. Warning for updating for a previous version of GW that was built using auto tools. So we're not building from a previous version. Um, but we can run this remove script anyway that's just when it's good to run it every now and then um, I've had a problem before where I've built BLFS I've had a package not installed and can't fathom out why. I've run that script, removed the uh, archive files and everything's magically worked all of a sudden. Uh, not sure what the implications of that are, but it's obviously important sometimes. How is it soon? now. So there's a few there, not too many. Um, right, so now we've got a patch to run. And then we can run in, let's build the directory first, and then meson configuration, man equals true, we've got that, se linux disabled, and we can add in doc equals true, for extra documentation, in fact it's the API which probably normally very few people would need and not forgetting the two full stops so ninja to build
okay, it warns about those error IDs. No error ID for constrained link ends, so won't worry about that. So let's install. Ninja install. And then a couple of tweaks here. I mean, these are probably already done, but, well, they will be done. But no harm in overwriting stuff again. It says reinstall these two packages. We shouldn't need that. So we can run the test. Um, not as a root, though. It's probably best not to. And just test. Right, that unfortunately is probably because I've run as roots just now, so let's try um, Let's try that. That's better. Singapore, I seem to remember we had a couple of these that failed previously, so and that was one of them. Okay, there's only one failure. I seem to remember there was two or three last time. Um, so it's good we got fewer errors, although I don't know why that particular one failed. Map to file. Sigaport. How to rename file operation not commit permitted. Probably that question mark that's in if that's part of the file name. So, if that's the case, it looks like, I, mean, I don't know if it's in system temp, that directory. Oh, it is, yeah. Um, there's no reason why that shouldn't work, because the temp directory is writable by everybody. So there seems to be some problem with the construction of this 
all those created at random bytes. Oh no, it has actually worked. Because it says failed to rename. Oh no, five bytes. Yeah. Failed to rename glib test 4096 random bytes dot pwg 0 k 0 to just random bytes without pwg and it has completed because that pwk pwg 0 k 0 part of the file name it started with is not there so it's strange that it's completed but then it says it's failed so maybe an, a problem with the test itself so I'm happy to carry on I'm, I'm not going to be too worried about that um, in any case the package is installed anyway but um, that doesn't look too much of a problem to me I wonder if it is a test problem with the test itself So there's nothing else to do, um, we can tidy it up now. And I'm going to mark this off as completed. And is this general? Yeah, it is general libraries. Okay, let's see if this is working yet. Yeah, it's back again, okay. Hopefully it stays like that. So now I'm going to install blues we've got dbus reinstalled in fact we've got glib, glib reinstalled and libicow so we've reinstalled all of these so it looks like the first thing we've got to do is to make some modifications to the kernel to ensure that bluetooth is working so let's become the root in fact i'll come the root properly with an SU minus. Going to the Linux sources, make menu config. So we need to go into networking support, which is just here. And then Bluetooth subsystem support. So you can see it's not active at the moment. So I'm going to set mine to be a module. And then go into it because you see it's indented just here, so it's um, in, within this menu. So we need RF, oops, RF comms protocol support. So I can set that to an M. And TTY support needs to be set. Then BNEP protocol support needs to be activated as well, either as a module or built in multicast filter support and protocol support and then also HIDP then we need to go into Bluetooth device drivers and select the appropriate drivers for your Bluetooth hardware so let's go into that and I need to find out what Bluetooth I've got so the easiest thing to do is to use LSPCI, which we've already installed. No, we haven't. Right, I thought we'd already installed this, and obviously not. Right, so let's install that first, because that will give us information. Oh, I know. I know what it is. It's because I'm an ordinary user, so... Uh, let's make this a bit bigger. E, 
minus PCI do minus uh, K to show the kernel modules so somewhere along here if we look down it should say something about Bluetooth in fact we could probably even grab blue no. ok oh it might be this last one actually wireless network adapter Um, I need to check to make sure this has got Bluetooth. I'm pretty sure it has, but um, let me just check a moment. Right, um, you know, I just started to find out if these have got Bluetooth and we're not sure still. I can't believe they haven't got it. Um, maybe the thing to do is to look up this here. This might be a combined Bluetooth and wireless adapter. So let's do a search on the internet for this. Let's see what this says. An official cock on the theorist driver's website. It doesn't really tell me what it is and looks like for Windows these drivers, so Oh, right, wireless and Bluetooth driver looks like. Oh, yeah, and this is a Dell. Let's have a look at this. This will be more useful. QCA9565. It does look like it's a combined wireless and Bluetooth device. Okay, um, now another way we could do this is to do minus V, is it? Um, Two V's gives even more information. No, this is more to do with the hardware, the looks of it. See anything there that 
stretches up. There's two LS USB, we've got that as well. Qualcomm, a serious, oh right, so it might be a USB device. The Bluetooth might be a USB device for the looks of it. Um, now this ID here, I think if we put that into the internet, that should come up with something interesting. Yeah, Bluetooth. Fostro, that's what I've got, isn't it? 3470. 3471 is there. So that's close enough. So it's definitely a USB device. So maybe that not only will I have to modify this option here, I'll put an M in there. May have to possibly, I don't know yet, but. Um, Modify the actual USB part. Uh, enable USB auto suspend for Bluetooth USB devices by default. Let's see what that says. Uh, might, might be useful, so um, I'll add that in. So we've got broad com support. Qualcomm, Qualcomm Aetherius, alright, no, I don't know which one it will be, help, Bluetooth controllers, hmm, I'm not sure which one of them it will be actually. So let's go back to the browser and let's try kernel options. Let's look for six five. No. Try here again. Someone. It's just taken us back to that page. There's no further information, unfortunately. I wonder, this says it's um, certified for pre-installed Ubuntu under 3470 is the Windows version, which is what this box was originally. And 3471 is the equivalent machine, same hardware, but just with Ubuntu on it. I wonder if that's what that's all about. 
Um, let's have a look here. Slightest problems to do with wireless. What I'm going to do is I'll enable all the protocols. Hopefully, there's no conflict. Um, I'm not going to be using it anyway, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, obviously, it was important to me. I'll dig a bit deeper, but um, I've done as much as I can for that bit for the hardware, so let's quit this. Menu and we've just got to go to RF switch subsystem support, which is back under networking by the looks of it. There it is, there it's already set, so that's okay. So I need to rebuild my kernel now, so let's make. Oh, I just noticed there's some more options for running a test suite, so let's quickly get back in there. These are probably already set. Cryptographic API. Oh, sorry, we've already got that set. Cryptographic API. User space interface for hash algorithms. That's down the bottom, I think. Yeah, that's already set. And user space interface with symmetric key cipher algorithms that one isn't set so let's add that in and do another rebuild um, I'm not sure that was actually compiling in parallel I didn't think it did maybe it was Okay, so now I'm going to back up my current kernel just for good practice. So I know the current one's working, I can overwrite the previous backup. So copy config to config dot dash backup CP system map to system map backup and cp vm linux to vm linux backup now return to where I was and cp arch x86 60 underscore 64 to boot VM Linux CP system map to boot system map and copy the config to boot config so that should be the kernel sorted out so what I might do is reboot this now so it's active, ready and waiting, um, and we won't have to worry about if it needs to be running or not. So I'm going to shut down the browser, come out of root, and terminate this session, and reboot again. So you can see it's number 8 that kernel, I've just rebuilt it twice so it should be number 10 when it boots.
and oh it's number nine actually so maybe it's each time it's installed that number goes up so I can check so let's go back to sources BLFS and I don't think I actually downloaded it did I? no Download the package. Obviously, you haven't if you haven't got Bluetooth, it's, it's optional. So let's see what we've got here. Noble library. Disable system D, no other options to alter there. So let's just configure and make. Check it.
Right, looks like for some reason um, the tests have hung. So I'm going to have to abandon them. I'm not sure why that was. Uh, let's try running them again and see if it happens. AVDTP has stopped on. So it's Gobex transfer actually looks of it. It's stopped again. Try one more time. Try running with minus J1 in case that's a problem. It could be that it's trying to use the Bluetooth and it's uh, wrong settings in the kernel maybe. And it's locked up again. There's nothing running. Um, one final try is to run ldconfig. Uh, it's, it's obviously something to do with the kernel, I think. It's obviously trying to use the Bluetooth. So, so I'm not particularly concerned that that's not working. So I'm just going to uh, carry on and install the package. So is it the configuration file? And some API documentation. Configuring blues. Um, so it says a, a main conf is installed automatically during the install. In addition, there are three supplementary configura configuration files. In addition, you can optionally can install the following as a root user. So there's obviously some commands need to be put into these to activate certain other features. And we need to install a boot script as well. So we're going to the PLFS boot script to make install Bluetooth. Let's see if it'll actually start. It may not actually, but we can check it. Oh, that seems to be okay. Seems to be okay starting anyway. Let's look at the message, see what it reports. There's nothing written there at all. Is some firmware that needs loading. I forgot about that. So that could be the problem. Ah. Great. Eight, one, six, eight. That's probably the wireless, possibly. Um, so anyway, there's there's no error messages from starting the Bluetooth. So whether it's actually operational or not, I don't know. And like I say, I'm not particularly bothered. Um, as usual, these things, if if you need them, they need a bit of configuration. If it's something to be done for, then it will take a little bit of time to tweak it and configure it to get it working. So anyway, that's. Blues installed. So we can tick that one off. 
system utilities. list I don't think it would be because we've not installed it before no so get rid of that tab now we can rebuild Python 2 as we've got one of these optional or both optional packages in oh course of unextracted the wrong one. Uh, um, that's the documentation we need to extract Python with a capital P. <coughs> After installing this package or updating pip2 with the command pip2 install upgrade pip it will remove pip3 installed fast to reset pip and pip3 run as a root user right so it looks like we've got to run that at the end not sure why I haven't put that at the end but never mind we'll have to remember to go back up here and run that command <coughs> let's just check to see which version currently is all oh right yeah it's currently got 2.7 so I've obviously forgotten to run that previously so we could run that now to prove that that works and rerun it yeah it's gone up to version 3.8 So install Python 2 of these commands. So system expat and FFI we can use them, yeah. And sure pip, yes. Enable Unicode UCS4. Use a switch if you want to build Python DBM against Barclay DB instead of GDBM. Well, there's no Barclay DB there. I imagine we would have built this against GDBM. So I'm not going to change that. So we're happy to use the default configuration. Okay, so let's run make minus k test. Test the package.
Okay, so that um, test has passed all 366 tests. Okay, 38 was skipped. So now we can install the package again. Um, yeah, that's right, that's what I want to do. Since Python 2 is in maintenance mode and Python 3 is recommended by upstream for development, you probably do not need to install documentation. Well, um, probably installed it last time, but let's do a command anyway. It says you can select which documentation if you need it with the Python docs variable. So you can see Python 2.7 has reached the end of its life already, actually. Um, trouble is, there's so many packages that still use it. That's why it's still being used unfortunately so that's that um, it tells you there how to select the documentation for this version if you need it apart from that we just need to remember to run this force pip command again um, if we do pip minus version well, it has actually retained it but I'm going to run that anyway just to be sure Just run it again here. Yeah, it's 3.8, so that's okay. So let's remove this by capital PY and update the list. So it's programming Python. Yep. And I'll just check if it's on the right rebuild list. No, it's not, so that can go. So now back to graph is <clears throat> um, so it looks like I need to go through this. Looks like this will probably be a rebuild as well. It needs open JDK, um, which I'm not planning to do at the moment. Python, uh, PYP is there as well. So, um, right, before I attack that, I'm going to just go through my rebuild list, see if there's anything we've done which allows us to rebuild anything. So I'm assuming TextLive is built now, even though the, like I said, the other packages haven't been built yet. So I think, uh, actually, let's just look at this first one. It's Ghost Scripts and TextLive. So Ghost Scripts installed properly now. Yes, I think we did that yesterday. Um, let's take a look at the other ones. Wow, that's got lots of dependencies. These are all Perl dependencies. That's going to be a big one to do. It looks like it's going to be straightforward. And it looks like it's the end of these. Looks like there's still problems with the Linux from Scratch website. Uh, 
Um, what may be the best thing to do here is to postpone these until we actually need them. If we do indeed need, need them, I'm not sure. They look like they might be standalone. I, I don't know anything about them. The, that one requires text live. Yeah, they all require text live, so maybe they are like extensions. This one doesn't require text live, actually. May just be separate applications. So, um, what I might do is to leave them for now and install them uh, uh, when I come to more of the applications because um, we're still trying to build libraries, resolve rebuilds um, before we actually go ahead and do applications. Um, so let me carry on. Yeah, so I, what I'm going to do I think is to rebuild packages that I've got that are relying on text live so let's see what I've got I've got libgcrypt zsh libunistring graphite2 so there's quite a few Looks like this is still having issues. So let's go through those libg crypt. libgpg error. So these should all exist now. So let's extract this. Enable libcap to support it breaks crypt setup. Not sure if we need that or we'll use that, so I'm not going to add that switch. So just run all these commands here. I should be able to run this command to make additional documentation. That seems to have worked. And now we can test package.
get top back up in the background at times. I can't tell if the anything is actually running, so I'm just going to leave that running in the background. Okay, so all those tests passed, so we can install. That's the root. And if you've built and turn up formats of the documentation, install them using the following command as the root user. So let's install that lot. That's all worked. So that is complete libgcrypt. crypt. And not that off on my list. Package, which is ZSH. So let's come out of here and tidy up. So I page loading. No, oh yes it is. Okay. S H So I've got all these which we'd expect. So let's get the additional documentation. install it, what other options have we got, enable cap, looks like a good one, to enable POSIX, okay, for what it is, disable GDBM, enable PCRE, Sounds like a good one as well. Okay, so let's build it. Make info commands. OK, 
Okay, now um, we can generate some PDF format documentation. And run some tests. Okay, so that has passed. We can now install ZSH these commands and we've downloaded additional documentation, so let's reinstall that. And finally, we built the PDF documentation, so let's install that as well. And that's done. Um, we don't need to do this about moving the libraries and so on, because we're on a single partition. And this should already have been updated. So we can just double check that it did it last time. And there it is at the bottom. So that's ZSH rebuilt purely for the documentation, I think. Yeah, text live, isn't it? We're doing. So let's go back there. And mark that off. Find it shells or is yeah. Right, to find the next text live to next package is relying on text live. I've got lib uni string next. So let's find that. Any string and again it's purely to rebuild the documentation that's no other reason so normally if you weren't particularly concerned about the documentation you wouldn't you wouldn't be doing this you were extracting and rebuilding the package So a straightforward package to rebuild.
okay, it's done. We can build it. Uh, let's retest it. Finally, reinstall it. And that's that one rebuilt. So let's mark these off. The beauty string. Back and find the next text live one. So the next one I've got is graphite two, which is after this be rebuilt after Doxygen text lives. We've got both of them now. So let's look for that one. Graphite two. Looks like the website's crashed again. So let's go back here. Yeah, Doxygen Text Live. So let's extract. So font tools is off the book, so it's not installed, so we need to put this in. And we can run this. Um, we can put this verbose in again if you wish. And followed by the two dots. And run make. It's done. Make docs. Make test. Test the package as a pass. Install it. And we've got some documentation to install. All right, okay, we've still got this PDF files that haven't been built for some reason. Man is the only one that's been built for the looks of it. Nothing to be done for Doc. Oh, Docs. anything else there to do with documentation so I'm not sure um, what's missing there we've certainly got everything installed that is necessary to build oh unless it's oh font tools is for the test suite 
build documentation. Oh, DB Latex we haven't got, which is off the book. Okay, that's why those two commands will fail then. So let's run. That one should have worked. Yeah, it's this one here that's failing. Yeah, okay, so we can't do those. So that's graphite reinstalled. Which is in section 10. Next one. That looks like that's it for the moment. For text live at least. So I'm just going to go through again and look for anything else I can rebuild. do curl actually because I've got that after xorg XORG libraries after FOP. Okay, so that's why that one's waiting. We can't do FOP here. It's got lots of dependencies. So let's look for something else to do. Does that come back? Yeah. So maybe the next thing to do is to concentrate on graphs, getting that completed. Um, as it says here, it doesn't need any libraries, they're all optional, but they obviously extend the functionality of it. I mean, if we look for one of these, say Dotty, um, we'll find we've already installed it, so it's, it's working. But the ideal thing to do would be to get everything installed that we possibly can here, because um, there's one or two dependencies on graphs to rebuild it. Right, so I'm just going to check these first packages. I think we've um, installed all of these now, including WebP. Let's just have a look at that one. So I will see WebP. Yep, I've got that one. So we've got all the dependencies in this top bit for bitmap output that are in the book. Um, Go scripts, we've got that. I think that's completely installation. Yeah. IBRSVG, that was part of the Go script popular. We haven't done I'm sure of that. So let's do this one next. Oh, looks like the website's playing up again. Uh, let's look for it locally. Oh, there it is there. Let's see straight away. So dependencies, it's got a lot of dependencies this has. It looks like we've got, I'd say all of those. See, make phone config caro. Oops, it's not checked out. JPEG boost car. Yep, so we've got all of them. 
Oculus something we'll install when we're on to building KDE as it's one of the packages associated with that. So let's download this. And extract it. Finish downloading. Okay, it's done. And let's see what other config options we've got. Let's make the build directory first. Release type. Test files. Our headers. Okay, so I just need to add on the GTK doc equals on. So let's copy that. this oh that was a quick no, this was always not the by project okay so we can just run make now extremely quick If that's done anything. Oh, I've just downloaded the. There's two files, and I've downloaded the data one. Right. So let's try this again. Make a build directory. Let's recall that config command. That's better. So let's run make. Um, MSS is not hard as that but I'm pretty sure we've installed that so I'll just double check that looks like it's going to take a while to download that page again um, yeah it's ticked off so happy with that I 
SPR. Yeah, we must have installed that. If there's a requirement. So that has built, now to test it, it says I need to download some tests using git. And then to run the test, put that command in, which says it only runs the test against Qt5 libraries. Um, they've passed, so that's okay. So let's become the root user. And make it install. Oops. Install some documentation. And then this extra encoding package that we downloaded and install that and that's that whoops that's that package done so that's poplar which is in section 10 poplar That's good. Um, free glut with libglade. Which I considered experimental. So free glut. We've got all that installed. That's fine. Now libglade. Um, not sure if that's something we install later. Today. Let's see if we can load Swig. GCC we've got with the Go language. Guile, pretty sure we did that. Open JDK, I'm not doing yet. Lua we've done, I'm not going to do PHP yet. So it's just these ones we need to check. It's a glade we could install them. Um, um, we don't need it at the moment, really, but I'm pretty certain it will be installed at a later date um, for something else. I can't think which now, which package that would be. Enable the GTK doc for documentation. And build a package. And test. Oh, that didn't work. Dog MKTMPL not found. GTK oh, 
That's interesting. Looks like maybe part of GTK dock is missing. I wonder if it's this stuff here, let's have a look at, I wouldn't say what's installed specifically. Um, right, so we need to, let's just check, we've got GTK Doctor build, GTK, no, we need, so we need to rebuild GTK Doc with FOP. We need to rebuild libglade for documentation. Because of FOP. So I'm going to have to rebuild um, libglade but without the enable gtk doc so I'll remove that for now rerun make that's better and make check and that does say the one test test convert yeah it's failed it's just there the failure so it's known to fail so let's just install this and that should be it for the blade so that's in chapter 25. It played, so that's a rebuild as well. So now we've got Guile. Not sure if we've already installed this. Let's have a look. Let's tidy this up. Yes, we have. So I'd say we probably don't need to install that. Yeah, I've got no record that it needs to be rebuilt. So let's not get rid of that one. Swig up a feeling we've done that one as well. Let's see if there's any rebuild info for that. No. Uh, let me check that this is installed because I've I've forgotten to mark it off if it is. So swig. Right, yeah, it's not installed. Um, actually, let me just double check that guile. Make sure that was ticked off. Uh, it's in programming. Yeah, it is. That's good. So, swig we need to do next. Save link as... Okay, source forge, oh, yes. Save it. Wait for it to download. Graph is 
So apart from OpenJDK and PHP, everything's in place. So I'm just while this is downloading. Oh, it's already downloaded. That was quick. It's quicker than I thought it would be. Um, I'm going to type in rebuild graph. Uh, actually, there's a language binding, so there's a possibility that anything that gets put against graph is will need. It may need these language bindings as possible. So I think it would be a good idea to go and install these two packages. So let's do swig. And what options we've got here. Okay, so I think reading what that says there will just take the default. Okay, it says to run make this make command here and explains why the TCL include command is unset or set to nothing rather. Um, but it says it this only tests against Python 2. If you've got it installed, the Python 3 tests will not run. So we've got to run two more commands to test it against Python 3. Um, it also says a failure of some tests should not be considered harmful. And there are some errors there. And that could be what it says about the fact that it's testing only against certain languages that are on the machine. So maybe looking for these other languages and not finding them.
Okay, so that has finished testing and there are errors, so um, not sure what we really gained from that if we can ignore or well, failure of some test should not be considered harmful. But um, let's carry on. There's nothing like it didn't stop straight away, so I guess that's a good thing. Let's test with Python 3. And then we've got to follow up with this other command. Okay, well they all passed, so that's more promising. In fact, the Python 3 ones worked. So let's now install this package. Okay, so that's Swig installed. up. 